Welcome back to the podcast. We got a really fun, interesting episode here. My new pal, Keegan Tyndall. God, I hope that's his name because I've messed up his last name before. Yeah, that's his name, Tyndall. Like Kindle, the book thing. Is that a book? What the hell's a Kindle? It's like a... I can't. I'm 41, but I feel 95. I'm terrified of AI and my parents. Uh, but anyways, today's guest is Keegan Tyndall. This guy is a comedian I met uh, out in... I was going to say New Brunswick, but I think that's where he lives. Or he goes to Rutgers, but which is in New Brunswick. But I met him at uh, a gig in New Jersey, Comedy Dojo, and uh, he was filming. He's a camera film guy himself, as I think we'll touch on. And uh, hilarious guy. I watched him on stage. I thought he was so funny. And then uh, we started talking, and it turns out he was in a horrific accident that we'll get into and talk about that a lot. But he's just a fascinating guy. This guy's going to be huge. Keep your eyes on him now. Um, but uh, in the future, I'm telling you, you heard it here first. This guy's going to be big. He's a film student. He's a great comic. And uh, we talk all about, uh, we get in-depth about the accident and what that was like. And um, it's really compelling, but also funny. We bust balls a little bit. We talk comedy. We talk upbringing. We talk uh, parents and uh, just a really, really interesting episode. I think you'll fall right in love with Keegan like I did, although I haven't talked to him in six months. I hope he's not dead, but I'm sure he's doing great. Although we texted a couple weeks ago. Sweet kid, and uh, this is a good reminder. I got to reach out to him, see how he's doing, but I think you're going to love the episode. And uh, I hope you're doing well out there, folks. I hope your mental health is right on par. I want to recommend a book, actually. Uh, this book, this is not, I'm going to hope to get him as a guest. Seth J. Gillahan. Gillahan, PhD. I'm reading it right now. Look, you can see I'm pretty deep in there. Mindful Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, A Simple Path to Healing, Hope, and Peace. I don't know this man. He's not paying me to say this. I just didn't come up with any quotes, so I thought I'd give you a book to read instead. It's very good. A brilliant and touching guide to connecting with your deepest self and finding lasting peace, purpose, and love. Take it easy on the negative talk, folks. Go easy on yourself. Negative talk is the number. Negative self-talk is the number one contributor to depression and anxiety. And uh, this book will help you. This podcast will help you, I think. And uh, when you're done, go check out Keegan Tindall. He makes a lot of sketches and uh, short films, and of course, he does stand-up comedy. And I think you're going to love them. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. So please enjoy me and my pal, Keegan Tyndall. We're here. We are. We're queer. You're gay, right? I'm working on it. I really, I really set you right up for it. I'm trying to get there. Keegan, well, how do you say your last name? Tyndall. Tyndall. Yep. Tyndall. That's a, that's a good way to let someone know you don't know their last name. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to pronounce. Uh -huh. Tyndall. Well, let's get in there, Keegan. I don't know. I don't really know you. No, I don't all. know you much either. No. No, I googled you a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Now I'm nervous. I looked up the show and everything. Did you listen to any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been gone for a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming back, though. <laughs> if we did. Which, I, which I, I think means you saw me and you're like, that kid's so messed up that I'm going to start the show. I got to bring the show back. No, no. More accurately, there's like 12 of these in the can and I don't have the energy to do it. It's a lot. What do you mean in the can? Like a. Aren't What's you in that? film school? Yeah. I don't know what that. Like, gar like in the garbage or you haven't edited them? No, like that we shot them. Oh, okay. But you're a film pay, student. I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention. <laughs> so this is where I can't tell when you're kidding and not kidding. I know it's a it's a problem. Yeah, I people tell me I have the same problem. Yeah, it's bad. I, it's not good. Am I bad? No, no, no. I think I think it's good. I think this is going well. People would always say to me that like I can't tell when you're serious, and then I'm I'll, sometimes I'll be like. But I just said I wanted to fuck my mother. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm like, I, but that's what? Do you? Don't the God? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm being serious. I don't. I'm almost never being serious. That's how I feel. Except this is like a serious podcast. Oh, but it's also very silly because I just recorded one with Andrew Chavon and we just 
did like bits for like 15 minutes. Cool. But you're a funny guy. You're a comedian. I watched you. This is how we know each other. We did a show for, uh, wait, is the camera blinking? It is. It's on. Yeah. From this angle, I can't see the red light. Red light means the camera's on. I don't yeah. know if you've gotten to this. Well, thing. I didn't. I, that's a chapter we haven't got to yet. <laughs> We're still working on red light. <laughs> I thought oh. it was supposed to be solid. Yeah, it's definitely it's supposed blinking to be the whole time. I think the battery's dying. Okay. We're good. It's supposed to be solid for sure. Um, no, I think that's the battery pack. Why is it blinking, Lex? Lex isn't mic'd, so. Well, I went to film school, so I would know more. Up top, on the big black. No, no, up here. On the monitor, on the monitor. On the monitor there. Yeah, that's just showing that it's recording. Okay, but it's supposed to blink. All right. This is terrible podcasting. Um, do you, if you look at the setup of the tripod, this is a callback to the previous episode. Do yeah. you see a pussy anywhere in there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, on that, on that uh, little, on the top of the tripod. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to do this sequentially. Boy. This has to comes after the Andrew Chavon episode. Oh heck yeah. Where we talk about the pussy. But anyway, so we did a show in Morris Plains, New Jersey, for Danny Braff, great mm -hmm. comic, great guy brother of Zach Braff, the filmmaker. Yeah. Or cousin. <laughs> or possibly or cousin. cousin. We're not quite sure because he hasn't brought it up yet. And you were on the show, and I, I, sometimes I have a bad habit of not watching comedy because I hate comedy. I love it, but I've grown to just, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're probably not there yet, maybe, but... So I was like, let me go watch some show. And the host was very funny. And then you came out and I was like, all right, here comes this asshole. Let's see what this idiot's got. Yeah, with my limp, I was limping up to the stage. Just Oh, did you? I didn't notice. The, I don't think I was there when you walked on stage. Or maybe I was and I didn't notice a limp. Yeah. But I thought you were hilarious. And I was like, this guy is great and very funny. And then afterwards, you started telling me the story of this horrific accident you were in. And I was like, this is the most fascinating person I've ever met in my life, which we can get into in a minute. But... Anyways, so I was like, let me talk to this guy. And you're a film student, which is all I ever wanted to do. And you're a young boy. You're like 23 years old? 22. That's crazy. Now, do you feel uncomfortable hanging out with a bunch of men in their 40s? No, it's it's weird because we like, uh, I live, I watch your stuff. Like, I watch your podcast. Oh, geez. So I'm trying to not be fucking weird. Oh. I have to actively not be odd. Oh, well, you're not being odd at all. I don't. I don't think, but well, now I feel like I just made it odd by explaining that it's not odd. Well, I feel weird because I think this is normal, and, and this is a, a, a thing that's interesting that you haven't dealt with. But as you get older, you just feel young. I feel like I'm 20 years old. Also, in comedy, it's totally arrested development. So I've never had a job. I don't. I've only been hanging out with my buddies and telling dick jokes for 20 years. Yeah. So I feel like a child, and then sometimes you're hanging out, and I realize I'm like, I'm old enough to be your dad. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when you, when I was your age, my dad was my age. We're like my father's age difference. How can I ask? How is that offensive to ask people how old they are? No, it's not offensive at all. We just went through it in the previous episode. Andrew Schwann forgot how old he is. <laughs> um, I'm four. I'll be 41 in two weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my dad's. 40. 50 he's i got an old dad uh, late 50s wow yeah. my dad is mid 60s oh so you have an old dad i have a young dad i have an old dad and your dad you told me a story about your dad that is hilarious also yeah he uh w w um when i woke up because i was in a coma i had all this new skin on me and he told me because he's trying to be funny he goes your sister's butt skin is on your face <laughs> I mean, use, use skin from your sister's ass and i just started crying i couldn't i couldn't talk or ask questions because i had like a thing in my throat were you crying because uh, you thought that was true or you were crying because you were just emotional <laughs> it was true i was on a bunch of drugs and i was like i don't i don't know about uh I don't know about skin grafts. Maybe that's true. All right. So, well, so now we got to get into it. I was gonna, I was gonna lead it. That was gonna be the headlining no, gig. Di dive in. But you just threw it out there. So you were in what sounds to be a fucking just a horrific accident. How long ago now? Is August 2020. Which th that's another thing that shocked me is how recently this was. Yeah. This might not come out for another five years. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to the podcast. So it's August of 2020. So I, I want to paint a whole picture in and lead up to this so you're you started doing comedy you had done one set is that correct i did one set and then covid and then covid so it wasn't it wasn't one set and then the accident yeah i had a little bit i had one set a little bit of like a taste of covid like staying inside and everything and then i was making a movie 
and I got went to go get a poster for that movie, and I got hit by a car. Okay, so let's uh, we'll, we'll come back around. Let's take it all the way back though. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Columbus, New Jersey. It's like southerny kind of. We're known for a farmers market. Oh, we got weird. the biggest farmers market in New Jersey. Interesting. And so, are you more like Philly th- shit, or are you more yeah, New York yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Close to Philly. Oh um, wow. And what kind of family are we talking? Big family, little family, divorced family. Oh, oh uh, boy. This is this is the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I got a. I guess a smaller family. Um, How many siblings? I got one. Fa- I got one sister. Okay. One big sister. Older? Older. 26. Oh, me too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, so she's four years old. Mm-hmm. Same as me. Fun. Um, and then is your family like a loving family? We're all hanging out, joking? Is it? Uh, it's everything I did growing up was called gay. That's what it was. Nice. Like if you ate cereal, it was really gay of you to do. Um, and this I, is in your family, not your friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I had a bunch of- No wonder you listen to my podcast. Teasy people who like were- Everybody's an alcoholic, but they're fun, and they're like uh, they're just ripping on a seven-year-old. Wow, yeah, that sounds very familiar to me. I mean, I, yeah. like drinking and calling each other gay and making fun of the young kid. Yeah, we used to play this game where we. Uh, my friends are always alarmed when I tell them about my childhood, um, but we used to play this game where we'd turn the lights off. Me, my dad, and my dad's brother, and everybody would have a wooden spoon. And you what? just go around smacking each other. And how old are you? Young. <laughs> Too young. It was me and all my cousins, and you'd turn all the lights off so it'd be pitch black. And are there injuries happening? <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> like blood and shit? Uh, there'd be like, a, if once somebody cries, it's over. Right, right. I mean, how hard are we well, hitting I, each other? I, if you're a kid, you hit hard. Cause you didn't, right, you right. Were, but like, a, I think the adults were lightly... Kind of whapping a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Do you talk about this on stage at all? No. I feel like th- this is f- interesting because you're uh, so young and new to comedy. I feel like you're, you're probably at a stage where there's a lot of things that I'm like, that's a bit. And then you have to just, I feel like when you start, you have to just do joke jokes. Yeah. Because it's like insane to just walk on stage and be like, hey, my family used to hit each other with spoons. <laughs> like it feels like but you it's need. charming. We did it in a charming way. Right. But it feels like in stand up in general, it takes time to like get to a place where you're like, I can talk about it. At least that's what it was like for me. Yeah. But you don't see a lot of young comics being like, here's my bit about my family turning out the lights and hitting each other with uh-huh. spoons. Yeah. But maybe it could be a bit. We'll get there. Yeah. And you said something else earlier that I think was a bit. But that's what I was uh, struck by. You have like joke jokes. You're like a you're a real comedian. Most people whatever, 3 years in, 2 years in are horrible. <laughs> Do you know that? You're good. Yeah, I, I think comedy. so. I don't know. I've, I've never really like I go to open mics and there's some bad jokes, but who am I to judge? Yeah, no, you're you're better than uh, the most comics your age and your time in, I think. But I only oh, saw one you. set. That's going right to my head. And it was a hot crowd. Yeah. But um, but so w- w- you started doing sketch and stuff like that. Yeah, I was making movies. What what age did you start doing that? Really young, like uh, six or seven. Anytime, really? Anytime I could get my hand on a camera. Wow. So like anything that recorded video, I was I was making movies immediately. Wow. See, this is where I want to just fucking kill myself because I did when I had a. I got like a camcorder for Christmas in high school and I started making little things but then I was like ah, I'm never going to do anything and I'm a piece of shit and, yeah. and I just I blew it but that's enough about me I just I, I blew the whole thing but what, what? where did the movie thing come from were you was big movie family would you guys I watched uh, so we didn't have like internet or stuff growing up and we kind of just we just had uh, we, we, would, we stole the neighbor, a lot of the neighbor's electricity so we just would power just this one TV and uh, and we had a bunch of like Will Ferrell DVDs and I just watched comedy movies all day wow that's also weird too because I forget I'm like I'm so old now that like you grew up with the internet yeah, that's yeah. well I didn't other kids around me grew up right okay internet. okay I knew so, of the internet I was like it was there that I could be jealous of it. So you're like a blue collar family. Yeah. You would say. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you start making movies at a young age and are they comedy oriented? They're comedy. They're like action. They're just like, uh, 
you know anything anything I saw I just recreated. Wow! And in high school, did you continue to make movies and stuff? Yeah, You're like, I got this caught is what up. I'm gonna be. I got caught up in like the video production class and all that. Wow! It's the only teachers I liked were the video production teachers. And you're writing the stuff. Do you have a group of friends you're doing this with? I sometimes I write with people, but I like to write alone. Wow! And you've had some success doing this at this yeah, point. Yeah, uh, the social media likes it sometimes. You uh, do well on uh, what do you call it? Uh, the TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. TikTok. It's about to get banned too. I'm gonna get this TikTok. I'm actually hoping TikTok gets banned because I never figured it out or did it and so i'm like this is nice we'll be back to level i really am i'm like praying it just i also don't on everybody else yeah i also just hate it and think it's ruining society i love it it's so much fun yeah yeah are you like addicted to it though i am addicted to it i Do watch you, hours of it i mean that's what's so crazy to me it's like so younger folks and I, I sound like i'm a thousand years old but it's like so you're not you're not familiar with what it is like to not have a, a smartphone no well no, yeah. To not have everyone hanging out looking at phone. Like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, like we used to have debates, like, and, and you'd be like, no, oh, no, that was 85, and then you yeah. just wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's so but weird. you can Google it. Yeah, yeah now you just, someone wrong. just Google everything, which is, I guess is great. But anyway, so then, I, I, do you want to be a stand-up comedy? How, a, a stand-up comedy. A stand-up yeah. comic? How does this come about? I went to film school. I was, I like, was, uh, I couldn't find a group of friends in, like, school so i went to like a stand-up club i guess they had where they would like oh. it was almost like an open mic but they would give you notes i oh, went to that God. and i liked it and i just kind of kept going and this is at what school now Rutgers. oh right right you that's where you go to film school yeah they it's kind of new but it's, it's called like something it's called mason gross school of the arts it's okay mouthful. yeah i remember you not saying Rutgers. yeah but yeah I, now i remember it. new brunswick <laughs> and you ever go to the stress factory no no. There's a comedy club next I to know, the Vinnie school. Brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Shout out to Vinnie Brand. We gotta get you on the show. Yeah. Shout out. <laughs> we never met. But. Vinny, you should you should have Keegan Tinden. <laughs> or don't. I don't want to come Til, back. Til, just... Tildell. <laughs> Til, Is this a bit or did you actually forget? Til Tilden. Right? Tin Tyndall, man. Tyndall. Yeah. Tyndall. Keegan Tyndall. You know, I have a godson named Keegan. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's not fair. You can't mess up my last name and then tell me about your family. Tyndall. Your right? last name is a form of organization. Tyndall. My last name is a noun and a verb. Put that in your pipe and blow me. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is the first episode we've ever done with an audience. You have by no the way. syllables. We got Siobhan. I know. Well, a lot of great comics are just two syllables Bill Hicks, Sinbad. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anymore I think that's it no I, I remember reading in Bill Hicks's bio he was upset that there was no great comics with two syllable names that's a crazy thing to be upset about yeah he thought, well, he's got some problems obviously <laughs> but do you ever watch have you watched that film uh, the documentary about Bill Hicks no everything I've watched is a sequel so oh, it's like that's heartbreaking you know what I mean the Godfather 2 <laughs> No, no. Have you not seen The Godfather? No, I just pro everything I watch is like a 2000s Jack Black comedy. But I don't understand. So you go to film school. I mean, this is like off topic, but you go to film school. You're not watching The Godfather? No. <laughs> no, I like to watch. I like to watch like Jurassic Park with Chris Pratt in it. But I mean, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. But uh, <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Like, aren't you required to watch? Don't you watch film and study them? I You're saying what I else. like to. I have to. Like, I have to go to the theater and watch this stuff. But I find something else to look at, like the ground. I just don't want. Like, I just don't want to. <laughs> I'm so confused by this. No, I get what you're saying. Like, I go, I am forced to watch what you're supposed to watch. I watch Citizen Kane, Rear, Rear Window, like all the stuff you're supposed to watch, I have been made to watch, but I didn't pay attention. But you don't like it. I, I don't, they ruin it by over explaining it. It's like but, having someone show you a movie and then just they get to talk about it for an hour. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm familiar with those. Uh, yeah, I got a guy I'm thinking about for yeah. sure. We'll talk more off stage, but off the camera. But but did you, don't you watch it through first? So I get, I, I get, I'm like, I'm off board halfway through. I want to make, I like making movies way more than I like to watch them. Interesting. Okay, we should, we should get back focused into our uh, mental health discussion. Oh here, yeah, but, I'm messed up. But yeah, real bad. 
Yeah, you sound fucked up because yeah. you're, you're told to watch these great movies. You love film. What do you think it is about you that r- refuses to watch these films? What is that in you that doesn't want to watch? I like silly. Like, I like things that are silly. So it's like serious just cannot grab me that often. Do you think you're afraid of serious things and conversations in general? Uh, yeah. I like, like, you mean, is it tough for me to like not do a bit? That, yeah. And uh, what, what, how are you in relationships? Do you have... Awful. No good. <laughs> no good. Now, what is this? Is this all from childhood? I mean, you guess your parents are divorced, so that probably Joe, fucked you up. I don't know. That's the problem. I don't know where any of this well, comes Well, maybe we can figure this out. All right, let's dive in. Yeah, let's get in there. What? How old were you when your parents got divorced? <laughs> Eight. Okay, age. that's a tough age. Yeah. You're, you know, you're just out of your formative years. You're probably... Maybe you blamed yourself. No, 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 that was their fault. Fuck that. They <laughs> but, did that shit. I didn't do any of that. Maybe on a subconscious level, because I read a, th- a great book called It Didn't Start With You, highly recommend, and it talks about, like, one of the things that's so hard about life for everybody is when you're a child, your parents are still upset or depressed mm-hmm. in general about whatever, particularly if your parents obviously have a tumultuous relationship, they're getting divorced, and as a child, you feel, I should be enough to make this person happy. Why aren't I enough to make this person happy? And this is something we're all dealing with to some extent in our lives, that how could they not just look at me? I'm like a miracle of their life. Sh- this should just be bringing them joy. Yeah. And it's not. I was, I think I was too stupid of a kid to think like that. Well, I don't think, you, you don't think about this consciously. Yeah. It's not like a five-year-old is like, hmm, I think they are, I, you I know. I don't remember being upset by it. I, d- I just don't like remember, maybe I... Because they were awful together. They were not a good couple at all. So when they were better apart. So it was like, I don't care. Right. But maybe you put up some walls to, to protect yourself from these feelings. Oh, I don't believe in love. That's fake. It's all, Yeah. It's you all. seem like you have walls up. Yeah. All the time. And this has been like this since childhood, you think? Y- yeah, I think so. I think that's... I guess that's where funny comes from. Because it's like, it's the only thing I can... It's really the only emotional level I can exist on. Yeah, I feel that way. I mean, like, to me, as a kid, it's like, that's the only thing... I talk about this a lot. It's like, the only thing anyone valued growing up was funny or tough. Mm-hmm. Did you have that in Jersey, I imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny and tough. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a plus. Yeah. But... If you could pee your pants and not go home, you were a champion. <laughs> right, right. That's like, <laughs> that, that's how I felt. Everyone was like, either like, that guy's hilarious or that guy's, t- like, I could kick your ass mm-hmm. or that guy, he's fucking hilarious. Those yeah. are like the only two things valued. And in my family, like, there was no, that, that was the only way to be seen or recognized was if you're getting a laugh. You're like, okay, they, they like me. They're laughing at me. Yeah, yeah. With, with family, it was definitely, you had to be tough and funny because, uh, like I said, you, we made fun of each other a lot. I got made fun of a lot by the adults in my family. Right. So it was like you had to you had to have like a tough kind of system going. Yeah, I think that too. I think that my fam- my extended family certainly. And also, you know, I'm not trying to disparage your parents, but the two stories I've heard of your dad is he's hitting you with a spoon <laughs> and then no, he's no. making a joke to your face after my a dad, tragedy. My dad's a great man. He's just a okay. little he's just a little crazy. Okay, yeah. He was crazier in my childhood. And then with the accident, I will say he kind of like, almost like calmed down like that. Oh, interesting. Just because he almost, almost, has 50-50% chance to live. Yeah. So I'm sure that, but I've had this too with my dad, who who I love and I think is, is great. But, you know, I remember I was at the, uh, the Boston Marathon bombing and, um, he like I heard the story that he went to the he he worked in the city and he went down to the finish line the next day my mother was like he was so emotional and and I was like oh wow my dad's gonna really and then there was no it's not like he treated me it's not like he was like oh my god we almost lost you sonny boy it was just kind of back to his stoic self but you feel a change my dad a hundred percent change stopped drinking a lot after your accident after well during he drank a lot He's always drank. During, he drank a lot. And then afterwards, he, like right now-ish, he's really been stopping. Wow. Just because he's like, I don't, he's like, he's, he was such an angry guy and 
is a very yelly guy and okay, now little, we're getting little things pissed him off. Right. What are you digging at me right now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, this, sound, this sounds, uh, there, there's something to this. You know, yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. like there was a lot It's a good thing of, this is all recorded, Yeah, uh, as I say it for will the he, first time. Will he watch? Uh, I doubt he knows how to do YouTube. Okay, yeah, he's not going to watch Mindful yeah. Metal Jacket. No, no, no. Who is, you know? No, uh, well, we got <laughs> about, about 8,000 people no, who watch. I'm yeah, joking. yeah, we got, we got a decent uh, following. No, but he's like. If we have a big guest, this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm pretty tall. Um, well, I think you, you, you know, you could like this could retroactively. You'll be the next Adam Sandler. This could be huge in like 15 years. You know. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you're a film student. Give it, give it a decade, and yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Um, no, you'll be dead. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your dad, you know, he's a good guy, but he's a ball busty guy, and maybe he's not giving you uh, the affection you need at a young age. It was such a mixed bag because he was emotional, but also was he would tease you for being emotional, right? So it was like he could be emotional, you couldn't. But now he is so he's a like textbook great dad wow oh, that's calm, beautiful nice like they'll like calm that like calm you down you know what i mean oh that's great so let, let's talk about this this accident a bit because i want to talk about your dad post accident so this was mind-blowingly recently i just assumed when you were talking about it i thought this was something that happened 15 years ago as a, as a kid or something like that yeah so uh, take me through it so you've done one comedy set then covid happens but you're in film school at the time. I'm in film school. I'm and you're like making Zoom a movie. Classes, yeah. Yeah. And you're uh, no, no, no. I was making a movie. School was canceled. I was just making a movie to make a movie. Okay. Um, like a feature. It was a short, but we were gonna put it in a festival, and it was gonna be a whole thing. Okay. I needed a poster for a scene. I needed to hang something up in the background, so I go to Staples. Uh, this guy prints a thing for me. I leave. Uh, I pull out. I'm driving a little bit, and this guy just comes from behind me at like 110 miles per hour. Hits the back of my car. We go flipping, and then like uh, we like kind of just exploded. <laughs> it's fire now, <laughs> uh, and we like like the stop came at like a tree. Like we hit a tree, and and, then, and so who's the someone's in the car with you? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was an ex girlfriend. Oh wow, she ex was an ex at the time. Yeah, yeah. No, it it she was. We were dating. Okay, and then. She died in the fire. No, I'm joking. Sorry. No, 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 no. I was like, you told me this story the other day, and I was like, I don't remember that Your part. eyes kind of just... Uh, yeah, I felt horrible. No, 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 no. She, um, she didn't. She's great and gone. I dug myself into a hole. She's gone list. out of your life, but she's with us Currently. in the comment and section. And she's great, and she's amazing, <laughs> and she's better than me. Okay. And she's a wonderful person. So, so is this, this is nighttime, daytime, the highway? Nighttime. Like 9.30, like right before Staples closes. And you're on like a rural road or you're on the highway? I'm on the, like, I'm on the highway. Like I just got onto the highway and started going. And now, so when you talk about this, are you t taken back to this thing or you've just told the story a million times? It doesn't matter. I don't, I remember it, but I don't like, I, like I don't, I don't get like all freaked out and crazy right um, i could just kind of be like it's not happening right now so that's pretty cool well there's a psychology that i talk about a lot is that that's so interesting that i heard about is that when you recall something you're not recalling the event you're recalling the last time you recalled it have you ever heard that no like you're you're remembering your memory and ge this is in general a psychological thing for everybody that it's like you're just you're not going back to that this is why like um eyewitness testimony is not always great because it's like you, you just keep remembering your memory so every time you're just remembering the last time you remembered it is what i heard yeah uh anyways so <laughs> so you don't know what the fuck so i remember you don't, you don't remember anything <laughs> uh, but okay so you leave staples you're driving and then i do, do you feel this presence coming no like it was so fast he he hit us and I was, we were, I didn't even know what happened. You know, I was like, for, I remember there was a good amount of time when I like, when I was in the beginning, I was like, is it my fault that I do it? You know? Right. Uh, it just all happened and I'm spinning. And then I think there was something with the type of, I think it was a like Ford Explorer. Where His the, car or your car? Uh, my car. Okay. Uh, that the gas, like some sort of gas thing was under my driver's seat, which is why my, I got burned. Wow. This um, is like Casino. Did yeah. you see that movie? Yeah. 
No, no. Well, he had the reverse. He got saved. He was like, there's a car bomb, but the car design had a steel plate underneath oh. the driver's side, and it saved his life. Oh, good for him. But he got he got Mine burned. Mine was the opposite. Uh, yeah, a bad yeah. thing was under my seat. Yeah, yeah. He got, it was reversed. Yeah. Okay, so when do you, when you're flipping, you have, do you recall this? I remember way too much, yeah. I like, I like, uh, I like ripped off the seatbelt, um, got out of the car, ran. I forgot to stop, drop, and roll. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, put myself out and kind of just stood there. Now, when you say put yourself out, are you like fucking slapping yeah, yeah, your yeah. face? Like, yeah, yeah. Fucking doing all this. Jesus. And then I look back and uh, the car's on fire and I didn't see my girlfriend at the time. So I'm like, oh my God, she's in there. So I like run over. Um, I look in there. She's then I look. Uh, she's not in there. Luckily, she's uh, she's in the parking lot talking to people because now people are gathered around. So so time has even though it doesn't feel like a time has probably passed. Some time has passed. Yeah, n- n- it all happened. Like I was still by the staples. I was like I went back. I, I was in walking distance to the parking lot. Wow. So we just pulled out, started going, hit by the car right out front of Staples. Um, I put myself out and I go to like the parking lot area and everyone's gathered around and stuff. Oh, Jesus. And there's a bunch of people coming out. Is police yeah, and yeah, ambulance yeah. around so, like, at this people point? People who are at the Staples and the Trader Joe's that was next to it come gather around and like people are offering me water. Uh, one, yeah, one guy was like, one guy was like, what did it feel like? And I'm really? Like, I'm like, hot, dude. I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. What are you talking about right now? That's insane. And, and are you, how much pain are you in at this moment? Are you just I'm running adrenaline's on? Adrenaline's pumping. I, I, right. I don't even know if, cause I had a, uh, my left foot is semi paralyzed. Like oh, it doesn't shit. work. Um, and I don't know if it was paralyzed at the time because I was running on it. So I could have had so much adrenaline right, that right. I was just running on it. But uh, but yeah, right now it's like floppy. Oh, fuck. And were there injuries also like ribs and hip and yeah, all that I got, shit? Uh, I got like burns over like down my body right here and down my back. But I don't think anything like nothing internal. I have like a little bump on the back of my head. It's wild to me. And, and your vision, I asked this the other day, but your vision was not... It wasn't, impaired at all. No, and your and your fucking lungs and kidneys and all that shit lungs is are all a little, fine. They collapsed a little. Really? Bit. Yeah. Ugh. On my birthday too, I turned twenty in a coma. And nice. On my birthday, <laughs> on my birthday, uh, they didn't work. Like while you're you're just sleeping, sleeping and yeah, then yeah, just yeah, like pneumonia. <clears throat> so much uh, smoke inhalation. Gosh, so this is like a fucking serious just gas fire. Yeah. On you. Hmm. That is uh, wild. So, okay, so how does the coma come to be? Do they put you in the coma? Yeah, I was asked. So I was uh, I was in the hospital. Uh, they're sitting. Like, I remember, like, um, going to the first thing I see is, like, 18 doctors around me. And I'm just asking, am I going to die? And they're, like, comforting me, no. And then I'm asking for more drugs. And they're, like, we can't. You'll die. So they told my mom. They were, like, we got to put you under. Like, we got to. Uh, put you in a coma so they did that was in august and then i wake up in october wow i mean there's like so many um questions here so are you, you're conscious through all like the trip to the hospital and everything you're i remember for- so much yeah so much like uh trip to the, i'm like i remember i was like uh it's in an article somewhere i was like making jokes in the back of the ambulance to the cop yeah these are called these are walls you have yeah. walls up yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are defense but the mechanisms. cop came with this me because is... he was le- he thought i was gonna die god but i was like making jokes to him um now it's weird and how it would uh, i'm confused by like i don't mean this like uh what do you mean you're gonna die i'm like genuinely like would you die of smoke inhalation or can you I because think like, could die of being these are third degree burns right forty three percent of my body, and I guess smoke inhalation. But I'm like, like it's it looks great now. Like I, my doctors did great job, but yeah. at the time it was like you could see how I could you could be like that you guy's gonna die. See your muscles because that's what I'm curious of. Like when you, someone burns to death, what is actually killing them? Fire. <laughs> yeah, the fire is the fire part. <laughs> 
it's the, what is the like, what cause ceases the blood to be flowing I to have, the brain? You know I what I mean? Ask. Is that like a crazy question? No, 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 no. I like, don't know. I understand either. like you're breathing in so much smoke that your lungs fill up. You, you can't breathe anymore. You've died. But it's like. It, 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 I understand you can burn to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just curious, like, uh, just losing all your skin. Is it because I don't understand the the? Uh, I know what you're asking. The scientific part of like, he burned to death. And I don't know either. Does your heart have to catch on Infection, fire? Maybe. I, I, don't know. I don't like maybe if you wait long enough. Yeah, I mean, I understand. Obviously, you're fucked up, but it's like, I, it's like your heart is still. Beating. I don't know. That's a good. I don't. That's a it's good. It's not question. bad. It sounds very dumb. It's not bad. No, I know what you mean. The brain. Well, I think I've heard this years ago. Is that all death is lack of blood to the brain? That's what somebody said to me, and I told that it's one of those facts that someone tells you in science class, and then you just tell it for years, and then someone else is like this. Is that right? Yeah, someone is that else is like, right? I don't think so. I always think of that. Um, if you get stabbed, are you like, oh, <laughs> the blood's not making it to the brain? I think. So I think man, like somebody was like, technically that's a case, but I don't, I don't know. But it is one of those facts. Like sometimes someone told me that it's sun, more sunny in Denver than it is in LA, and I just told everyone that for like 50 years, and then someone was like, that's crazy. <laughs> and then the other one was Maine has the most coast of any. Famously on Tuesdays with stories, I told this for years, and I still get people being like, you fucking retard. <laughs> Look at these numbers. Uh, but anyways, so you understand the question at least. I get what you're saying. I don't know either. Okay. I don't, but it, I'll tell you what, it felt like I was going to die. Yeah. I was so, like, this is it. I'm dying here. So um, you're in the ambulance. Are you think like, does it, f are you going in and out of consciousness? Like, I'm fucking dying? Yeah. I like, there's like, yes, I was full on like, this is I'm done living. And that's a scary feeling. I like, bet. I was I do remember being in and out. I remember some things. I don't remember the whole car ride, but I remember like things I said, like them asking me my birthday and shit. Wow. And are there photographs of you like pre fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. healing? I can stuff? show you after this. They're brutal. Head was the size of a basketball. My uh I don't know if I want to see it. You should. Uh I'm thinking of did you see the movie Prisoners? My face was yellow. Uh with Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw it. Yeah. But Paul Dano, when he's all fucked up. Yes. Did you look yes. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That was a real messed up boy that shaved my head. Now, this um, is an interesting thing. Maybe this maybe this could be a bit. I always wonder. Oh, thank you. There's like all thank these. Uh, it might be my bit. Let's see how it plays out. But there's all these photos of like drunk driving accidents and stuff where you're like, whose gig is it to be like, all right, let's clear out. I got to snap the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like someone took a photo of you. Uh, Who did that? My family. Oh, okay. My mom was oh, like, geez. I want to keep this. <laughs> I want to hold on. I want to hold on to this memory. It's like framed over the mantle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the fireplace. That's right before he graduated, right there. <laughs> um, here's him in elementary school, and here's him with his skin off. And so your parents must... Uh, they're, are they divorced? They're divorced at the time. Yeah. So do they both come? Do they have a decent relationship enough to be like, yeah, hey, yeah, son yeah, is on yeah. fire? Their kid's dying. So they, I think, I don't know, I wasn't there. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I mean, have you, and you, have you talked to them about, about this, the trauma that they felt, the trauma that you felt? Have you guys had like an emotional? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the most emotional thing is talking about it with family. Like seeing how that affected them is wild. Sure, yeah, because, um, yeah, it's the, it's the worst yeah. thing. Who really stepped up was my, my, because my parents loved them to death, both a little bit insane. Um, my sister really stepped up. Uh, she's a trooper. She, like, was the only normal one the whole time. Wow. Sat by my bed every day. Oh, wow. Yep. And so when you're in the coma, do they come and visit? And Every day. Wow. They got, like, a motel nearby for, like, all the months I was there. And but when you're put into a coma, is there is it like today's the day, or is there like a timer on it, like uh, where he's coming out in October, and <laughs> how does that work? I think they they kept trying to wake me up, and I just, I think I didn't want to sometimes. Yeah, you hit the I, snooze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like fucking <laughs> chill, okay. Give me a month. Yeah. So, and are they scared that you're gonna die during this period? Because it's not healthy to be in a coma for no. a long time. No. Your body's atrophy and all that shit, right? They uh they like. Yeah, I don't, I, what was the question? I forget. Like, 
are they concerned about the, the doctors? I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're. Oh yeah, yeah, concerned. yeah. The term they use was he's not out of the woods yet. Right, right. Yeah. God, that's fucked up. And you don't have memories in the coma, right? You're not like dreaming and stuff. No, like, no. No, I guess that's not how comas work. No. And so, what's your first memory coming out of the coma? Obviously, this is where I wanted to get to with your dad making this joke. I remember I, there's a there's a very sad picture of a whiteboard where I was like writing like a frail old woman. Yeah. Um, I just wrote, I remember being on fire. Wow. Just couldn't t- I couldn't talk because I had uh, the stoma. What's they a dystoma? Like, it's something they shove down your throat to get all the ammonia out and stuff. Smokers oh. get, sometimes when you see somebody like doing that like yeah. buzzer thing, yeah, yeah. They, have, like, they had like stomas. Um, so I couldn't talk. And I remember, I remember my sister and I remember asking, was it my fault? Wow. That's sad. Yeah. That's sad that that's your first thought. <laughs> yeah. See, this goes back I to the divorce. Guilty. This yeah. is like the divorce. No. On a subconscious different. level, maybe you think That was their fault. fault and I know it. Yeah, well, this sounds like this guy. Okay, we haven't talked about the perpetrator here. Yeah. So this guy was inebriated. Yeah. And do you know his name? You don't have to say it. Uh, no. But he's in, in jail. In prison, yeah. And he was, so he was drunk. He was drunk. He had a he had some kids in the car. Yeah. Uh, they're fine. They're okay. Oh, that's good. He was without a scratch. Uh, well, well, he's probably got a couple scratches now, folks. Yeah, yeah. Rape. <laughs> I threw a few tips in there. <laughs> um, it's like, rape that guy. Yeah, I wonder what how that's handled in prison. Because in, in in prison, you know, it's like if you do damage to children. I wonder if it got out. Like he's driving to endanger. He's got his children, and he fucking yeah. almost killed a kid. I don't think. He, I hope he didn't tell anybody. I think you have to. I think they like. You're like, hey, did you, you fuck up any kids? Yeah, I think that's how it works. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've watched uh, a couple prison movies. Hey, everybody. This week's episode of Mindful Metal Jacket is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. If you know me, if you're listening, you probably know me. And if you know me, you know I love Sheath Underwear. I guarantee I am wearing it right now. It's all I wear. It's summer. You're going to sweat. That's inevitable. What you don't have to deal with, though, is your penis sticking to your thigh and your sweaty ball suction cup to your dong. What the heck? Who wrote this? Sheath underwear lets you take on the summer heat in the most enjoyable way possible. Each pair of underwear has a pouch for your balls and a pouch for your dick to keep things separate and way more comfortable. I- I'm reading these one-on-one with a-, a lady producer. I feel horrible. Sorry, this is what's written here. Anyways, I love sheath underwear. Robert Patton, he writes, these crazy ad reads. I can't. I can't. I don't sign off on this language, but I do sign off on this underwear. It's the best underwear I've ever worn, ever. I don't know how else to say it. You got to get yourself some sheath underwear. Robert Patton, he's a fan of this podcast. He's a fan of comedy podcasts. I'm going to see him at Skankfest. I hope to see you guys there. He's the best. They're so comfortable. They uh, There's a separate pouch for your testicles and penis, using the medical terms. And uh, he's an Army veteran, fought in Iraq, for God's sakes. So uh, please get some sheath underwear. If you don't have a dick or balls, by the way, that's good too. We love that. Check out Sheath's sports bras, bikini briefs, and boy shorts to get in on the action. Go to sheathunderwear.com and use code METAL to get 20% off your first order, plus Sheath's underwear 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com promo code METAL. Get Sheath underwear, support the show, support your balls. This is an interesting thing to me. Do you have feelings? I mean, you probably don't because you're cold and um, yeah, yeah. very stoic. But yeah. what are your feelings? <laughs> Do you have a feelings and emotions towards this man who fucking I was really angry. You? I mean, for a minute, I was really, really angry. Because I, like, uh, I had such a, it's, such, it's so difficult to accept it. Of like, course. It was, biggest thing was for me was like how different I was going to look. Right. So I was so mad at him for making that decision. I was like, I'm suffering for this guy's dumb decision. Right. Um, so I was very angry for a long time. And are you not angry now? Because it's not been that long to me. I'm less, I just don't have time to be angry. Wow. That feels healthy now do you go to therapy are you in therapy no i should be yes absolutely they they removed from the accident you should be they forced therapy on me like yeah. in the hospital uh they had like a therapist i had to talk to and how many was that just a session or is it like we got to do 10 hours he would stop by 
like uh, whenever it was needed. Okay. When so, they were like, he seems fucking sad, and then they'd go in there. And was there like a just a, a horrendous depression that you went through, or? Yeah, because I was like, I was convinced, because uh, they wouldn't let me see my face for a while. I was convinced that this was over, like stand up was over, right? And like being on camera was over. I was like, I'm never doing any of that again. So that's what was depressed. I was like, everything I've always wanted to do is gone. Right. So that's what like was so bum me out. Right. And when did you start to go? Oh, it doesn't matter. I can just keep doing all these things. Uh, I kind of just. Uh, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but no, you know no, no, I mean. no, no. I know. Uh, I made a movie when I got out of the. I was in the hospital plus rehab for six months. Um, when I got out, I made a movie. But in the hospital, first time I showed my face was on a TikTok. It blew up. Oh wow! And I kind of just went from there, and everyone was saying uh, how handsome I was. Yeah, you're a very handsome boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like a sexy man. Oh, you got thanks, the flowing man. hair. Yeah, you're you're like a good looking bro. I like it here. This is a good. Yeah, this is a good yeah, podcast. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll suck you off as soon as we're done. <laughs> rock on. But so <laughs> it's rock and roll, brother, right there. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you go into this depression. You talk to a therapist, and when you get out, you're just like, I don't need therapy anymore. This is boring. Uh, therapy is boring or this <laughs> podcast is boring no 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 it was boring I'm like, I think therapy. this is enthralling no 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 uh, so I, I I go to therapy and I swear to god this lady was like gossipy about it I've tried therapist right after and she's like she wants to know so like the juicy details right almost like 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 we were on a podcast she wanted to know like she didn't want to help me get better she wanted to like she was so interested in the gossip of it right right and then um I had one therapist one time who was my sister's therapist who then said he couldn't be my therapist because he was my sister's therapist. That's funny because my wife and I go to the same therapist. Yeah. So but I feel like brother and sister should be able to go to the same therapist. He was like, no, I'm not doing both of you. That sounds crazy to me. So I stopped. I didn't I just do this now. You should go see Alan. Blah. He's the best. Yeah. Well, he's great. Well, you might need what it someday. What does Alan know? Yeah, what does he, Alan know that I don't? He knows uh, He knows a lot. Well, you know, he's uh, 74, so yeah. he's got... Like, well, they always told me to go outside, but I couldn't. I couldn't be in the sun. Can you be in the sun now? A little bit, yeah. Oh, is with, it still like a, a serious... Sun, a lot of, well, ever, really. I got to be careful. I can go in the sun, but I just got to be careful now. So how does it work? So what is it... How do, what, what, how do they repair a face that's been burned off? It's It's... Well, the grafting. I yeah, and you. where does the skin come from? I have like grafting sites on my on uh, my my thigh and a little bit of my ass, where they took. I don't know where my ass is. I can't, <laughs> I, li- I don't know. It could be on my face. It could be on my arm. And this is while you're in the coma. While they're cutting off no, pieces of now, your leg. Now I'm. I think I was awake for some of the surgeries. Oh. Not awake, but like, they were putting me like like right, under right, right. for the um surgeries and they so i mean some of this i just can't handle but so they basically just uh, fucking scope off uh, cut it off they and like flatten it they do a little see these bumps on me so they kind of yeah. like oh yeah they kind of like flatten it uh, uh give it a texture and then they it's, and how glue it on i don't know I, I don't know if they yeah use tape or and so how does it feel does your fin- skin feel it used to feel sensitive but it feels great now it's it feels fine. like an old person you ever felt an old person um, my wife's four years older than me. Like an old person. <laughs> I thought that was gonna kill. I thought that was gonna kill. I'm trying to save you. Uh, um, yeah, I think. So. Yeah, I have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it feel. Yeah. Like to you, it's it great, feels, right? I don't mean like the feel to the touch. I mean like for your feel. Yeah, it like, feels. Uh, the only thing that's like weird is I can still feel a staple under my thumb. Ooh. Like, but not like not like a pinch, like a like a nerve kind of sends through. Oh wow! Um, and did you feel? Physically, like, can you could you go play basketball? Like, yeah. The only thing would be running is a little hard because of my foot. Right, your but, foot's um, fucked up. But uh, yeah, they like they. I have a joke about it where one of the surgeries they do is they laser it, so they burn it again. Nice. Which doesn't it to me? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, right, right. But it works. Right. 
And so do you feel like, have you reached this point of like, um, that you always hear in interviews where you're like this, looking back, it's the best thing that ever happened to me or like my life would have been whatever. Do you have any perspective no. that you're like, this is awesome? It was way better back then. Yeah. But uh, there's benefits. There's benefits to it. Right. Like, like uh, I don't know if, I don't know if this is anything, but I like... I get more attention from women because of it, hmm. uh, which is cool. Uh, that's about it. Um, um, <laughs> that's about it. Well, you got uh, you got you're the only guy with burn victim material. Yeah, there's that one I've other seen. guy, but I'm oh really taking him out. Yeah. Uh, oh, he sucks. I hate yeah. him. I think he's way more burn than me. I looked because I looked it up. Uh, I was like burn victim jokes. Yeah, uh, shit. Yeah, it's interesting because we had met in the green room. We're talking, and I didn't, I didn't put it together until you started talking about it on stage. Like I wasn't like when I met you, I wasn't like, "Whoa, burn victim guy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so. what it's. Well, my, my, is that how you would react if I was? <laughs> well, this guy you're whoa, describing. Whoa, burn victim guy. <laughs> It's not like I was like, oh boy, <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with this? Yeah, you, you uh, some adults do act like that though. Oh, you don't know. I bet you forget that like some people don't grow up like they point and stare like their kids would. Oh um, wow, well I had a incident uh, years ago with a person who was in the industry, uh, like the industry side of our industry, show business industry, and we were hanging out talking at a party. This is in L.A. I think I was drinking. So this is a long time ago. We were having beers and uh, bullshitting, and she just seemed like a normal person and someone that you're like, okay, well, I gotta impress this person because they're in the business. And hello, and a little person, a friend of mine, walked in, and she was like, oh my god, oh, oh, I can't, I can't. And I Look was at like, it. <laughs> pick it up. I swear to God. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, hey. And I knew that I don't, I don't want to say his name either, but. I mean, people are going to figure out the one little person friend I have. But I was like, oh, hey. And she's like, oh, my God, he's coming over here. Uh. And oh she gosh. was openly and visibly appalled. Did you tell her to stop? She's like, I'm sorry. I just got a fear of, like, little people. And I was like, that's insane. That's like well, the crazy. What are they going to do? That's like. <laughs> well, I think people, I th and I think this is like a real thing. People have, uh, I don't know, it's like a term for it, an asshole or like that's, whatever. That's insane to claim to be afraid of of little people it was great i mean it was like one of the wildest things i've ever experienced but she was like adamantly like oh and i was like that's, that's like a, a human, a human <laughs> living being i um, had I, I had a little person nurse in the hospital yeah and i was so drugged up like tripping like delauded basically heroin and this little person nurse would come at night and I was so on drugs that I thought somebody's kid was stabbing me with shit. Oh wow! So I would every time this guy would come in, I would s smack him. Oh jeez! Because I thought I was so on drugs. Yeah, well, they deserve like, it. Some, that's some, that I thought someone's kid was fucking with me. That's wild. Uh, God, did he like understand? Did you make? amends or anything after i that was quiet and i smacked him so i don't know if one time he turned the tv off and told me to go to bed so maybe oh wow maybe uh or i'd imagine that i don't know no i think it's all right i'm sure you get over it. you should hit him with a spoon yeah hello well folks. it wasn't dark yeah that's, fair. that's the it's not fun if the lights are on now where where are you with uh subside do you do drugs do you drink because i imagine this could lead to a horrible drinking and drug problem uh, i don't drink i drink Maybe once every four months, if someone, if I want to drink with like an old friend. Wow, that's always but, um, blows my mind. People that aren't drink. Is your family drinkers? Yeah, everybody. Oh, interesting. Uh, I just, I love it. That's why I don't do it. Oh wow! So you're like one of those people that's like, oh, if I do it, it'll be bad. So I'm not gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like all the pain will go away. So it's I can't do it. Wow, that's impressive because that's how I felt. So I drank as yeah. much as you can drink. Well, so many. It's like so many people are like, don't drink. It's not, it's not, it, it won't make the problems go away. That eventually I was just like, all right, I'll listen to you. Right, right. Wow, that's impressive. Because it feels like this is the kind of thing that happens and then people get addicted to painkillers and booze and stuff. But that's yeah, not you. The painkillers were, they were awesome. But yeah, I, I love painkillers. No, that's good. Yeah, I, know, I, I always talk about it. I'm like, I've had, you have like four or five beers and a couple of Vicodins. It's a really nice place to be. Yep. But I don't want to encourage anybody, you guys. You stay in school. Yeah. Um, Film school. 
Go to film school. And so you come out and your parents, your dad makes this joke and you're going to, was he immediately like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yes. I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Because I'm very jokey. So he was like, this will be a good time for this. Right. Um, but it was not. Because like, I was convinced. I thought it was true. Like, right. like, like I said, I was high during this. Like I was on Dilaudid. And I imagine you're extremely vulnerable. Oh yeah. I was terrified. And do you, st now, I, I think I asked this when we, we met before, but how are you in cars now? Are you terrified? Because we talked about this, uh, the previous episode with my friend Andrew Chavone. It's like, I've had two run-ins with crazy homeless people and every homeless person I see, I dive in the bushes yeah. and I'm like, I, I, I carry a gun now. I, are you freaked out in the car? Do you have moments of, uh, fuck, what's that? Who's this? I don't like... I, I'm fine other than like a big like unexpected bump like if there's a if there's a puddle I didn't see and it, the car like poof, right I don't like that because I don't like because I got hit from behind so it's right a, a surprise I don't like but I'm not like freaking out after I'm just like that's that made me angry now what about the people that are driving because this makes me psychotic especially in the northeast I think it's like the worst although it's bad in Texas too but I'm driving on a highway in New York whatever and there's these people that do you know, as you know, 300 miles an hour fucking behind you and they're weaving in and out of car and it just makes me, I, I want to, I, I hate them. I want them to go. Yeah, to I don't get jail. it. I don't, where are you going? I always felt this way. I'm like, even when I drank, I never sped. Like I drank and drove or drove drunk. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> I never was like, yeah. I, was like, uh, I was like, okay, let's really focus here and do the speed limit because I don't want to get arrested or, or kill somebody. Well, I get why you would. I, I, I want to be places faster, but uh, I just don't do it. I'm yeah. patient. I get But do, do you have like particular, like, look at this motherfucker? Yeah. I'm not like grinding my teeth, but I'm like, I'm like, that guy fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that guy sucks a lot. Yeah. I'm mildly like just whispering to myself. Right. Or get out of the way. Like this time I see it coming and I'm like, not again. Now this might be a stupid question, but like how much time do you spend like daily now at this point? Like are you waking up thinking like, oh, that fucking motherfucker, this fucking accident? Or is it, it obviously it, it, you think about it every day, I imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about my first girlfriend every day. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that was 35 years ago. Not really. That was supposed to be a joke, but you know. But you know, you know what I mean. I'm like, I, like, how much time are you spending thinking about this? Are, are you closer to like, oh yeah, a couple times a day for a few? I seconds? I think the annoying stuff is all the like the lotion, the sunscreen I gotta do. Right. Like in I the don't morning, I'm that. waking up and I'm like, uh, I gotta massage my face because the Ugh. scars are like uh, tight. So I gotta like, you know, put a little like pressure on them. But that's like the only thing that really pisses because I want to like I want to go to the coffee shop. But right. I gotta do sunscreen and shit first. Right. Yeah, that's suck. And I imagine a lot of people don't think about that. So you have this thing that you're like, you guys don't even understand the shit I'm dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, like when my friends are complaining about some stupid shit. I'm like, all right, yeah, but you don't have to fucking pull your skin apart. Right. Now, can you go to the beach and swim in the ocean? What goes on there? I haven't yet, uh, but I don't know if I'm... I'd have to ask somebody, I guess. I don't... Like, I... What I heard, from my understanding, is if I get sunburn, it's almost... In, in like, the while they're still developing, it could be permanent. Right. Like, I could really fuck up the pigment of my skin. So, is your, your skin is still fucking whatever? Yeah. Recovering? It's still... Re it re recovers for a long time. Jesus. I had to wear... Um, uh, I forget what they're garments, I think. And it's like a skin tight, like really tight mask that would uh, like basically you would put, put a lot of pressure on your uh, scars so they would heal like smaller. Wow. But it was like it was insane looking. It was like it's like a ski mask, but it's really tight. God, that uh, that suck. This is a bummer, man. Big Lebowski. You must be a big Lebowski guy. <laughs> yeah. Are you not? Yeah, Joe, yeah. Are you faking this? <laughs> no. Why you don't watch The Godfather? What do I know? Grow up, dude. This is uh, this is a bummer. <laughs> um, Grow up. The Godfather is better than The Big Lebowski, you're aware. Sure. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you. You yeah. wear glasses. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I've lived and... Uh, but The Big Lebowski is great. But how do I know? Why would I think that you've seen The Big Lebowski? Yeah. 
right? What are you asking me? <laughs> if I've well, seen the Big Lebowski, you're dismissing it. Like, of course, I've seen the Big Lebowski. Uh, no, I haven't seen that movie. No. Have you really not seen it? No. I'm t- any movie I'm supposed to see. Oh, because I thought the bit was like, yeah, obviously you fucking idiot. I've seen the Big Lebowski. No, 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 no. Um, I just lost control on that one. Yeah, uh, it's a very good movie. I I know and it's funny. I don't doubt that, but uh, Boy, I haven't seen it. I don't have the you're, discipline. You're upsetting me. I'm sorry. I don't know what yeah. you want me to do. I mean, you're a com- comedian filmmaker and you're not watching. I've seen Step Brothers and Talladega Nights. Yeah, I hate those ones. Have you seen Swiss Army Man? I did see that. I like that. Yeah, that was fun. That's one of my favorites. It was real weird. Everything um, Everywhere All at Once was really good, too. I haven't seen that one. Wait, I had a question that I was going to ask you. I think it was relatively unrelated to this. Oh, fuck. It was going to be it was going to be something some host you are. It was going to be something ab- along these lines. Yeah. All right. Driving, drunk, talked fire, about that. Tragic. Am I running and ringing any bells here? Yeah, I can't remember. Father. But anyway, so oh, tell me about your first setback. Like uh, hey, that's that's like a pun. Your first setback. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then your first set set returning yeah yeah um i went to some i went to some open mic in new jersey and uh, i went up i did pretty good uh i wrote some of the jokes that i have now that you saw yeah uh i did pretty good and then the guy after me goes up and he's bombing and he does that thing where he tries to save his set by shitting on me it's very uncomfortable yeah i hate those guys um it's very uncomfortable, but I got a show at like a guy booked me on a show on my first time back, which was reassuring. That's great. Yeah. yeah. And so how long have you been back now doing stand up? Not that long. Not that long. No. But do you feel like I'm I'm better than most at my years into comedy? Well, everything I'm a consumer of stand up, too. So everything I hear is you're not going to have it till you're 10 years in. Yeah, this is what fucked me. This fucked me really yeah. hard. And I don't want this to happen to you because, I mean, don't get me wrong. You're dog shit and you have seven minutes maximum. But yeah. I, 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 had, um, I had this, I was just talking about this yesterday with Louis C.K., Who's that? Uh, he's an asshole. <laughs> no, I'm um, big fan. If <laughs> big, you know, LC, um, LC, LC, K, LC, K. His whole thing. He he puts his letters in everything, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He loves the letters. Big letter guy. Anyways, uh, I was talking to him yesterday about because we, we both started in Boston and it held me. It fucked me up for so long because all these old Boston guys were like, "This guy over here, not me, but like we're talking about whatever guy." Thinks he's got an hour. The guy's eight years in. He says he has an hour. Yeah, right. You got 20. Okay, pal. And I was like, oh, shit. I better not try to have material. Yeah. And th- seriously. And they would all talk. About, and anyone that got success, not this is only a few guys. This is not, the whole Boston comedy scene is not like this. But there was many people that were like, if you started getting success, like this fucking sellout ad, this guy, he's all Hollywood. Watch yeah. out for that guy. And... It still fucks me. I still have that mindset of like, maybe I don't have material. If Am I trying too hard? I should try to keep things low so no one thinks I'm trying to be some climber guy. Yeah. But anyways, the point is, if you have 20 minutes, you have 20 minutes, even if you're a year in. No, but you're right. It's scary like when everyone's talking around you. like at that, And everyone's, everyone's older than me. So I'm like, yeah, you know more than me. I'm a piece of shit. Uh, That's how I felt. And... Um, I wish I hadn't uh, thought that. I wish more people, I was like, oh, that guy's a fucking idiot. But everybody seemed to have, maybe you have this now. I mean, looking back, now I'm just like going down the fucking, I'm just unraveling. But it's like at the time, you're like, oh, wow, this guy, no. And then you look back and you're like, that guy had been around for 15 years and was doing the same act yeah. and was doing like VFWs for a hundred bucks. Yeah. But at, I was 18, so I was like, oh, okay, mister. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you look back and you're like, that guy's a fucking idiot. I had people who uh, didn't do stand-up, who ran that Rutgers club, who ran like the stand-up club that were like trying to educate me on stand-up like that. But they didn't even do it. Right, yeah, people They love... just did the logistic, they scheduled the, the meetings. Right, yeah, people love to tell you how you should be doing it. But my advice to young comics, and we were talking about this on the previous episode, is just take care of your mental health. 
first, especially if you've uh, been through a horrific, traumatic accident yeah. that I'm sure still lingers. I'll give it my mentally. best. Yeah, but jokes are priority. Uh, yeah, yeah. You should write jokes, but you should take care of because then a lot of these people you'll get success, and then you're just a psycho fucking asshole. Everybody hates. Yeah, it's so boring to taking care of yourself. No, it's great. It's awful. No, it's fantastic. Look at look at all look at all these uh, cool movie posters I have that you haven't seen. Yeah, it's upsetting. Well, actually, the movie posters are downstairs, but. You know these guys? You know who these people are? Uh, I can't even see them. <laughs> I love that you're like, my vision was not impaired at all, but I can't see any of the who are posters. They? No, I don't know them. Well, that's all one guy up there. Oh, who is he? That's Bruce Springsteen. You do like Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of photos of him. That, how about the guy top right over there? This is embarrassing for you. Yeah. You just stop bragging about this. Philip Seymour Hoffman, look at him. I'm bragging. I'm just oh, I know him. Pointing. You know him? I know him. Yeah. He was good in he, uh, the movie. Yeah, he Big Lebowski. Yep, love that one. <laughs> it's a hit. So what's that? How many? How many years of we got to wrap up? How many years of film school do you have left? It's my last semester. Whoa! I'm doing. My, I just finished my thesis. Holy shit! We should make a movie. Let's do it. Let's make a movie, dog. Of yeah. That's an ironic dog. No, I didn't feel ironic. <laughs> no, it, it was. felt like you delivered it. No, and no. Then you got like a little shameful. I of swear it. to God. No. It was good though. Yeah, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> let's do it, bro. Bro. I think we should make something. I think we should too. Do you ever try to do you ever think like I'm gonna make a movie about the accident and it'll be like I'm, a- I had this idea, I made a web series and I kinda wanna make it a movie um where I had the near that near death experience. Now I wanna know what life is about. So what if I try everything? I have a few episodes filmed with this web series where we try like teaching, we try like therapy. Oh, fun. Try, just trying everything. But uh, that's really the only, I would want to make it funny and kind of doc narrative-ish. What if you were like, um, all right, now that I, I came close to death and it made me realize that you can die any moment, so I got to get my bucket list. And then everything you that's on your bucket list, you can't do because your skin is... Oh, like sensitive. going fun in the sun. Yeah, yeah. Like I uh, want to go to Florida. Go in a hot like, tub. No. Yeah, you know. Like, oh. And you're like, fuck. And then you're like, well, I guess I'd go to the mall or Bring something. A new bucket list, I guess. Yeah. I could have somebody else do it for me and describe the fun. Oh, that's funny. What's the ocean feel like? And then you're under an umbrella. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like I'm in the pool. You know? I have a movie. I have, I'm f- like acting in a movie in Florida, uh, in the summer, and I'm nervous about that. The sun. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Well, I, I, I feel for you, but I think ultimately this is gonna be the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> um, it's one, it's one of those. I'm like, uh, a, like, not a serious note, but like, I do feel like people are always like, everything happens for a reason, and it's all meant to be. And I'm like, I don't believe in that, but I do believe in what has happened has happened, and you just. You have to accept you it in and, the present and live. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? It's not like it's not like um, like that mindset of like yeah, it is what it is. Yes, exactly. Which people make fun of people that say like, hey, it is what it is. There's a lot of people that have that bit, and you're like, yeah. But it actually is. There is some. That's wisdom. the only way you can exist after something like this, right? If, if I if I tried to like go back, you know, I'd, I'd sit still. But another way you can exist. What I'm talking about is people that are like it was. It's uh, it happened for a reason, and that this is meant to be. Instead of you, you could also be like, Those yeah, a fucking are- horrible thing happened, and now I have to live with it. Yeah. But some people are like, this is your fate, and you were meant to be Those people annihilated by a car. That's what I'm saying. That's a lot of people. Yeah, don't. I'm, I'm taking them down a peg. Is what I'm trying you to do. And you're making fun of me. Then say that. That's what I'm if trying to say. Somebody's gonna say that to me. They gotta catch on fire. But that's what I think. Uh, I think like the majority of our country thinks that way the majority of our country is in shambles yeah we touched on this in the previous episode also um doing two episodes in one day is bad because i keep referencing a thing that happened an hour ago but to the people at home it happened eight days you'll probably only edit one right i'm not gonna edit either right is there stuff to edit what should we edit stuff oh no 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 do not like put it on the computer i don't know how to do that oh you have a guy well, that guy over there. Oh. But then I don't even, you're not even the guy. There's like another person. Oh, really? Yeah. You it's take sh- the thing and. It's just one piece of footage. That's what I mean. So yes. we're not going to edit this. You don't edit? You don't know how to like edit at all? I don't know how to edit at all. Oh, wow. But you're I'm saying. Filmmaker. Yeah, you hire an editor. But editing's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, it's a way to, um, helps me make the movie. Well, being there in the edit is fun. But uh, editing 
is not fun. I like it. Because okay. I've done it since I could play like an instrument. Okay. Well, that's that's fun. Well, maybe I'll uh, hire you to edit something. This. That's all right. We'll cut out all your parts. That's all right. <laughs> um, the good I, parts? I thought this was great. This was fun. Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, you're taking little jabs. I feel like I, I feel like I did a fantastic job here. Yeah. What is this? You, I got you in my home. This I is did a, good, too. This I is don't a big know. deal. You're complimenting yourself. No, no. I was complimenting the show, and then you started shitting on me. Bruh. I... Dog. Come on, dog. <laughs> Relax. I don't know if we can be dogs after this. Chill on that shit. All right. <laughs> no cap. No you what? know all these? No cap? No, I don't know no it's cap. Like, it's like, uh, I'm not lying. No cap. Ugh. Ugh. We're doomed. Uh, you know what it is. We're doomed. You already know. It's what it is, dog. It's what it is, y'all. It's what it is. Bruh. What was that song? Gra. Who's that? That's what it is, y'all. Uh, Remember? Don't do this. Don't Was that Snoop? <laughs> Nobody knows, and now, Biggie. You, now it's just embarrassing. Biggie or something like that. All right, we got to wrap up. We're over an hour here. I can't dedicate an hour to you. Yeah, you can. This is horrible. All right, Keegan Tindall. Keegan Tindall. <laughs> <laughs> and tell Joe, uh, Joe Wrist. <laughs> tell them where you... <laughs> Tell them where you're going to be, where they can find you, and all that good stuff. Go on Instagram, Keegan Tyndall. All my stuff's on there. Or TikTok if you're seven. Um, yeah. And we'll put it in the subscription. Somebody really. else will. Joe won't. No, I don't know. It's somebody do else's that. job. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm an artist. You don't fucking do the... But it's got bullshit. the office on DVD. No artist have ever had that. A... That was a gift. B, The Office is fucking great. The first, the season two and three of The Office is like amazing. No one's ever said that before. No, nah, that's, I mean, many people. Maybe not a 20 year old. I know, that's the bit. That's the that's the joke I was making that it's popular. Just end it. Well, end I don't know. Thing. You're half my age. The, the Office, what about Seinfeld? You ever see Seinfeld? I'm actually watching it for the first time right now. It's embarrassing. <laughs> this is awful. I regret all of this. Yeah, because you're great. Uh, I wish uh, I wish he was going 150. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we got to go. Thank you for having me, Keegan. That was uh, our yeah. thanks for being on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Hope we can be friends after this. Uh huh. All right.